All right, so in your notes, as it says, another part of chemistry comes from the classification of different types of matter. We have pure substances that we'll get here to in a minute, and we've got mixtures. A mixture, as you see, is a physical blend of two or more substances. Just like our physical properties and physical changes, when we blend things together physically, we don't harm anything involved. It's still the same substances that we put together. And eventually we could separate them if needed. And so there's two types of mixtures, heterogeneous and homogeneous. Heterogeneous mixtures are when we have uneven distribution. Okay, the substances are not evenly mixed. And you see here a particle view, you've got big things surrounded by little things and different colors. These aren't very common in chemistry, but like in life, here you see a bowl of chicken noodle soup, perhaps one spoonful you get some noodles, another spoonful you get a carrot, a salad, every bite of a salad is different, maybe you get a crouton or not, etc. So again, not very common in the chemistry situation, but in life you can think of lots of different heterogeneous mixtures. More importantly in chemistry are homogeneous mixtures. In fact, in chemistry class, we call homogeneous mixtures solutions. Uh, in the lab the other day, you made a copper chloride solution. I gave you some copper chloride crystals. You put them into water. You stirred it up. You made a solution. So homogeneous means all the substances are distributed uniformly throughout. So the copper chloride was evenly distributed amongst the water. Syrup, for example. Um, any, like, again, going back to food examples, but like a milkshake. From the first sip of the milkshake to the last sip of the milkshake, it's the same. All right, so that's what homogeneous means. A particle view here, you see you've got blue and black dots, but they're even uniformly distributed. That's the gist of that picture. Now, as it says in your notes packet, we can separate a mixture into its components. And our components are substances, and there's two types of substances. One, we have our simplest type of substance, which is an element. They are, as it says, the simplest forms of matter. They contain only one kind of atom, and we cannot break an element down by normal chemical means. We can destroy elements other ways when we get into nuclear chemistry, but under normal chemical means, we can't break elements down. You see the particle view, they're all the same t uh, red circles, one type of atom. And when we put elements together, we make our other type of substance compounds. Okay, so the elements are like little Legos, and you can build lots of different things from these pieces parts. All right, again, there's only a handful of elements that are, are known, and they make up everything around you. So obviously, they're very versatile, and we can put them together in many, many different ways. Now, with elements, of course, comes the most recognized symbol of chemistry, the periodic table of the elements. And so I gave you one of those in class. And if you look at them, you'll notice that each element is represented by what? That's what I just showed there, a letter symbol. So if you look at this periodic table here, you see a bunch of letters. All right, oxygen is O, carbon is C, manganese is MN. And so if it's just a single letter, it's a capital letter. If there's two letters, then you'll notice that the first one is always capitalized, the second is lowercase. So Uranium has the symbol U, and it's just a single capital letter. Plutonium is P-U, cap <laughs> I know, funny, P-U, <laughs> capital P, little u. All right, so do make sure that you don't have two capital letters to represent an element. Now, some symbols make total sense, all right? So again, oxygen is O, carbon C nitrogen N. Others aren't as logical. AU is the symbol for gold. AG is the symbol for silver. Potassium is K. Why do those not seem to match up with their names? And that's because some of these 
elements are extremely old. They go back to ancient times. And back then we had that wonderful language of Latin. So aurum was the, world, the Latin word for gold. And so that's where we get the symbol AU. And so it makes a little more sense. So a lot of our ancient elements come from Latin origin names. And a couple from others like tungsten is W, Wolfram, German. Now when we put these symbols together, we get chemical formulas. The elements go together to make a compound, and then their symbols create the formulas. H2O, water. C6H12O6 for glucose. NaCl is sodium chloride. And H2SO4 so for sulfuric acid. So we'll see plenty of those throughout the year. And then on the periodic table that I gave you, there's different colors. Most of our elements have a black symbol, and that means that they are solid. But pay attention, they are solid at room temperature. All right, Because we can take any element, if it's solid at room temperature, we can add heat and melt it. We can continue to add heat and turn it into a gas. All right, So just at room temperature, that's what the color scheme is set at. Reds are gases. You'll notice the whole last column, column 18, they're all red. Those are the noble gases. There's a couple blue ones, mercury and bromine. They are liquids at room temperature. And the outline symbols are, symbols are man-made. So again, every element after number 92, uranium, is man-made. And there's actually two others, promethium number 61 and technetium number 43 that are man-made. So realistically, there's only 90 elements on this planet that exist naturally. All right, and from them, again, multiple things around you are made. And so yes, when we put our elements together, we get these compounds. Those atoms of the different elements are joined by chemical bonds, ionic and covalent, you might remember. And a compound can be broken down back into the elements. So here you see a picture, sugar, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And when sulfuric acid is put on it, it creates a carbon cake and a bunch of steam, H2O, is released. So that sugar is broken down back into its components. And here you see the particle view. Those are like the universal symbol for water, a big oxygen, and two little hydrogens. They look like little Mickey Mouses. But it's a combination of two different elements, and so that's what a compound is. Now take a moment and flip to the back page of your notes packet, and you'll notice that these pictures are there. Again, these are the particle views of what we just talked about, element, compounds, and mixtures. And see if you can recognize what they are and label them properly. So pause the video and see if you can properly label those pictures. All right, so hopefully you found, again, the picture that has just one type of atoms, that's our element. So the second picture is an element. Our compound are our little Mickey Mouse people again. Not people, sorry. Little Mickey Mouse pictures. All right. And then with our mixtures, homogeneous means they're kind of evenly distributed. And heterogeneous, again, not very common in the chemistry world. You just got a bunch of random different things mixed together in no pattern. All right, so there'll be questions like that on your exam coming up where I'll give you particle views of different substances and you hopefully can correctly identify them. Now if you flip back, just on a final note here, there's a little flow chart you can create to help you classify the different types of matter. So again, can you physically separate a sample of matter? If you can, then that means you have a mixture. If you can't, then that means you have a pure substance. And so yes, again, like if you're looking at a salad, you could take the pieces parts apart and separate it. But in the chemistry world, physically separating, oftentimes we talk about perhaps one of these methods, filtration. If you have a solid and liquid kind of mixed together, you can pass it through some filter paper and the liquid will go through and the solid will stay behind. Or distillation. 
distilled. You probably recognize that word from water, distilled water. If you see those water co coolers, a uh, major company is called distillata. And that's by using heat to heat up a liquid to its boiling point and separating the mixture that way. So when you take water and you heat it up, it boils, pure steam comes out. So you trap that pure steam and now you have pure water and it's separated from anything else that was in the mix before. Centrifuging, perhaps you've heard of that. That's spinning something very fast and getting it to separate. So like if you draw blood and you put your blood sample in a centrifuge, it spins really fast and the red blood cells go to the bottom of the test tube and white blood cells, water, serum, and everything else separates towards the top. All right, so yes, if you can physically separate it, then you have a mixture. And again, we talked about our two different types of mixtures, heterogeneous and homogeneous. So is the mixture uniform in composition? If it is, then you've got a homogeneous mixture. If it's not, heterogeneous. Again, not many chemical examples of heterogeneous. They're all food-related here. And I have milk in quotation marks because perhaps you've seen on the side of a milk container it says homogenized. Okay, milk is a mixture of things, fat, water, casein, etc. And it's homogenized. It's blended together for a certain amount of time, but then once it hits its expiration date, if you've seen spoiled milk, you see that it starts to separate back out. And again, in chemistry class, we call homogeneous mixtures solutions. Now on the pure substance side, can you break down the substance by ordinary chemical means? If you can, then you have yourself a compound. If you cannot, then it's an element. So your examples of elements, anything on the periodic table, and then compound again, any of those different formulas. I hope this helps you, and until later, bye-bye.